Welcome to the Resonance Test. Join us as Elena Schechter, EPAM's Chief Marketing and Strategy Officer, speaks with Sergey Nosov, CEO of Tesla Suit, and Andre Paiko, who heads Tesla Suit's research team. Well, welcome. Happy to have you. So cool name, Tesla Suit. Indeed. Very and cool. so tell us how you got to be a Tesla Suit T. The name came from sort of kudos to Nicholas, uh, Nicholas Tesla who effectively invented AC and all our products and our haptic uh, in our products done by electromuscular stimulation. So in fact, Andre, it is an actual suit, right? Maybe yes. you can describe what this is. Imagine full body suit, uh, which could uh, at the same time uh, register a lot of biometry data as well as deliver um, various of uh, uh, haptic sensation and electrical muscle stimulation. So, um, whenever you can imagine it, that will be Tesla suit. Mm. In fact, we think about the suit as a, a digital interface between a human world and the virtual world, and uh, we can pass the sensations and and uh, data as well as all the other information with using that medium. How are you thinking about the various use cases then in terms of where you are now with the suit and what it does? The Tesla suit incorporates a, a number of technologies under the hood that work independently from each other, but also in combination with each other. Two directions that we currently uh, taking with our product is XR training, uh, training in virtual or augmented reality, but also we use the suit as a motion capture for the motion capture where we can track people's body movements and arms and so on during that simulation. But the other use case is kind of catered toward medical use mm -hmm. and healthcare use. So how are you guys handling and how are you thinking in general about data when it comes to medical applications? Uh, we are doing some of the uh, preclinical experiments as we call it uh, together with our medical partners, patients or people after a uh, stroke. Uh, or spinal cord injury. And uh, Tesla suit is capable of uh, being used as uh, some of standard uh, medical devices. Um, I, I wonder if I could push a little bit just on this collection and handling of data when it comes to personally identifiable information and privacy and security protection. Mm -hmm. at, the, at this present moment, um, we don't collect um, personal data. However, we, tr we will Certainly for medical big data analysis, it will be segregated into the chunks and will be followed under the certain uh, legal protocols relating to each of the regions that we deal with. We spent some time test driving it this afternoon and um, there's the, the, the combination of the various techniques that are used to make it a really uh, immersive experience. How, how does it feel for the wearer? A lot of the people who tried it today were very excited about the experience, so they were they were quite positive about this. They certainly, I, I don't think they expected <clears throat> what what we kind of delivered in terms of sensations. Some sensations were quite realistic, and some weren't. They were depending on the you know on the person and how people perceive those. But they, they, they certainly, it's a very very unique experience. That's for sure. People get, uh, they just simply uh, forget how much time do they spend in this VR. So like 25, 30 minute session goes like uh, uh, one moment. I want to come back to sort of the business model because we talked about the fact that it's not today a consumer product. Mm -hmm. um, what is the business model and how are you thinking about it in the future? The business model at the moment is a, effectively a hardware sales model that we're hoping to uh, integrate into the mixed model where we add software component into this and we start mixing the hardware and the software models. We do deal with a lot um, with XR training, which is upcoming and actually fast growing market. And most of our clients, is, as you pointed out, are B2G uh, government services or B2B enterprise training services. And that, that's we see a lot of traction in that market. But also academic market is a big one for us. And I know that you've started a number of these types of partnerships already, mm -hmm. one of which is in the medical field with uh, the Hospital for Special Surgery. Can you talk about that partnership and what it entails? The focus of our partnership with HSS uh, 
you know, if, uh, is to create a product to allow the patients to uh, treat it remotely as well as be diagnosed remotely. Maybe just touching on um, really the elements of the scope of the technology today and where you see it going in the next couple of years. Within the next five years, we're seeing progressing in the medical field uh, quite extensively. We can really use the technology and utilize this technology for consumer market. In, the, in utilizing the technology in the things like, for example, I know pajamas for older people that can take biometric parameters and prevent you know, heart attacks during your sleep. And there are like a lot of uh, sub-technological products that can come out of this um, stack of technologies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got it. the name for it. We, yeah, the name is perfect. <laughs> we like the name. <laughs> Thank you.